focus close to focus far. So we've got another battle today. A long time ago when I was deciding on which mic to get, I went with the Rode Micro because it was the simplest and easiest solution. It sounded the best from all the comparisons. It's like for 70 bucks Canadian, 11.99 American. It was the best in its category. Are you clipping my mic? You're clipping it. Show the details. I'll prioritize this. So today I want to see, this is obviously the better mic, but will it sound better to the average consumer? That's you. Your average, you basic bitch. There's a couple things I want to find out. One, this mic doesn't sound very good from behind. When I want to do epic b-roll of squirrels, you wait, it's gonna happen. Even on this camera, we'll see if we can do it. It doesn't pick me up very well, whereas this one might. We'll see which is better and which reduces traffic noise the best. And then we'll do an in-studio comparison. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So you're listening to the Rode Video Micro. It's a great little package, best in its class for the price. You can't do better. No Sennheiser, even though I'm a Sennheiser fanboy. Their mics aren't as good as the Rode Video Micro. And it's even better than their Rode Video Mic, mic Plus. <laughs> their best one for like 400 bucks because it's too bassy. Rode thinks you need all this bass. It's not quality. Whereas this is actually clear. So Deity reached out to me and asked me if I would review this mic. Now I was considering this over the Rode Micro and I'll be honest with you, I went with the Rode Micro. It's cheaper, it's lighter. It seemed, I listened to a couple comparisons. It didn't seem that much different on my crappy speakers. Now that I got studio monitors, maybe the world is different. And I gotta be honest with you, this thing looks ridiculous. Look how big it is. The thing on top of that camera, are you kidding me? What the hell? And it doesn't even come with it. I had to buy this extra where the road just comes with its own wind muff. So you buy the package, you get everything you need. Well, let's see if the sound is better. It's very windy right now. The, the road usually... There. The road usually handles it okay. Those meters are clipping. Oh boy. That's gonna be a fun post-production process. So now we're on the Deity. Is it handling the wind better? Does it sound deep? Can you even hear a difference? It's very windy still. What about the side? It seems like it's handling it better. There we dream. <laughs> Why did I choose to do this on a public street? The traffic noise is one thing I'm interested in because this does have a low cut filter. Dare we dream it. So now we got the 75 hertz filter. It cuts all the low vibration so it makes me sound like a chipmunk, but it also reduces car and wind noise. Is it working? It feels like it's working so hard. Wow, it's heavier though. It's much heavier. It's noticeably heavier. And if you can see me in the reflection, look at that thing. It's ridiculous. I put the 150 hertz now, that's the highest setting. Is it reducing that traffic noise? I even brought my lav mic, we'll test that. But compared to the little micro, the tiny little micro that could, is it really worth jumping up in price, in weight, in everything, and having people look at you? She looked at me. She looked right at me. She's like, what is that? <laughs> it's funny, when I'm testing those gimbals, this lady walked by me, she's like, what's he doing? Is he making a movie? I am. I was. Yes. <laughs> you better be comfortable with being the center of attention with this thing on your... Everybody's looking. They're staring at it. They're just like, what the hell is happening? Okay, now we're on the lav mic. I feel like the lav reduces everything much better than any shotgun mic so far. These things barely even fit in my pocket. Oh, I'm a cartoon. I'm a raccoon cartoon. The advantage of this one is I can turn around and film something out there. It wouldn't matter where this camera is pointing. The audio just stays so good. Oh, look at all that blurry stuff back there. And this guy with its little wind muff seems to handle the wind better than anything. And if you hide it in your shirt, double the protection, if not triple. So let's do some tests with some epic B-roll footage, 60 frames per second in the teleconverter mode. 
autofocus, you're not gonna believe it. And we'll test the audio from behind in those glorious situations. Can you even believe it? You can't. Oh, glorious mountain squirrel with the lav mic. How do you, oh no, stay, I have a hazelnut. I bought you special hazelnuts. Take it, my friend. Oh, you didn't see it. Oh, you ruined my life. He is squirreling so hard right now on the lav mic. Did you find it? Did you find the hazelnut, buddy? I got your hazelnuts. Peanut flavored. No, don't. Oh, God damn it. Hey, little buddy. How you doing? We're on the deity. We're on the deity D3 pro. Are you still in focus, my friend? Do you want a hazelnut? I got you a hazelnut. Oh, he's gonna eat it. Do you love hazelnuts? Oh, my little friend, you love them. Can you hear me? I had to turn the volume way up. I imagine it's not great. Let's turn the low pass filter on, see if that helps. 75 hertz filter is now engaged. Oh, how dare you? How dare you? 150 low pass filter engaged. Because usually when you're behind the mic, you get all this extra bass and it sounds terrible. Wind is picking up. Still looks like we're good. We are good to go. So now we're on the road micro. Volume is lowered. That can't be good. Squirrel enjoying his hazelnut. It's not a myth. They do like it. But they do get nervous as you walk towards them. They do not appreciate you sneaking up on them trying to kill them while they eat. They're weird. They're weird like that. That's fine. How's the teleconverter option? Feels like it looks terrible on my screen. We've learned a lot today. So I'm gonna go edit this video and oh god, I'm stepping in really wet stuff. Oh, that is the bane of the sock and sandal existence. Oh, that's the only thing it can't handle. The puddles. Oh god. So I'm gonna go see which one sounds best for out here. And then we'll do a little test inside, short, short and sweet, see what's best for the studio, if it's lower noise floor for the big mamba. Okay, now we got the D3 Pro up here. The fridge, I can hear it in the back, can you? There's a couple pros and cons to this mic we'll get to when I review all the footage, but I just want to do a little audio test right now, and we'll put it up against the road micro. The thing I'm noticing, I can boost this all the way up to 10 with the Fuji and lower it all the way down. So this is pure mic preamps. On the Rode Micro, I guarantee I won't be able to do that. We'll have to boost it up in the Fuji a little bit. The Fuji that could. I'm using a mirror hack. I can see it. Oh, there's a mirror over there. Look at that. That's fantastic. I guess I could have just used the mirror behind me, directly behind me instead of buying that other one. That uh, was a misfortunate purchase. Oh, that's embarrassing. Did you focus on this? Oh my God, you're so amazing, Fuji. I love you. The mic is, oh, it had room. Oh, it has like two inches. It could have been closer to me. Oh, the whole system is flawed. So I'm interested to see if one performed better outside. I have a feeling the deity is gonna perform better in both cases, but will the downsides outweigh the good? I'm going to listen to all these files now, edit the video, and then do the conclusion. So I'll see you in a bit. You autofocus wizard. Just fujiing up our lives. The pleasing shadows. Wow. So I've listened to all the footage. It's actually pretty shocking how much better the D3 Pro is on the noise floor. That's what you notice when you're talking. There's always this background hiss to every mic. I guess the room has it. All I hear is traffic and God. Oh God. The deity just gets rid of it so good. I mean, the Rode is a cheap mic. It's not meant to be the ultimate image quality, lowest noise floor, but my God, I guess money does buy you happiness. That is unfortunate. Also, I noticed this wind muff way outperformed. How dare you, size doesn't matter. That's a myth. It's not the size that made it better. It's Cause it's white. I'll see you in racist hell. This is the Movo WS140. It's the one deity recommended I get, and Gerald Undone had the same one. He told me to get it. So it works really well. 
surprising, and I don't think it sheds. If all that mattered was sound, the D3 Pro is the way to go, but the Rode has some advantages. One, obviously, the size and weight and cost much lower than Blubber Boy over here, Blimp. There's a couple things about the D3 Pro that are worse. One, it needs a battery, so you have to keep it charged. Right now, if you have a non-flippy screen camera, and I just pray for your soul, if this thing dies, you have no way of knowing. It's just gonna shut off. But it does go red first for a long while before it dies, so you should be able to see it. I can see it. It's green now. So usually when I turn the camera on and the mic goes on, boom, I can see, oh, that's red. Okay, I better charge it and then switch out for my micro that doesn't need that asshole. But when you turn it off, it goes into standby mode and there's an amber light just saying like, hey, I'm hanging out here. I'm ready for use next time you wanna make a video. And it just stays on for a long ass time. And out in the field today, you heard that one clip had some interference. I don't know what that was. I don't know if it's because I kept, I was pressing the 75 Hertz button, then the 150, and then just one clip, it just started. I think it might've been, I walked by something. Like none of the other mics picked that up, but it just, it got this, it ruined the clip, really. I had to cut a bunch of things out from that clip. I just left a little bit in to transition to the next phase. It ruined my life. So bottom line here, it's superior to the Rode Micro in the studio. I like it, I will use it for these videos from now on. Better sound quality, reduced noise floor, I love it. Sounds great, awesome. Outside though, I do worry, what was that interference? Will it pick up again? It was much bigger and more cumbersome, so I don't think I would use it as a vlogging mic. Simple, this outside, this inside, or lav mic in all situations. I think I might start using that lav to vlog with just because it not only saves you the 40 grams of this, it's significant. I'm staying in the shot due to the mirror technology that I have developed. So if you were considering this mic over the micro, I hope I made your decision easier. They didn't give me a discount code, I don't think. If there is one, I'll post it down below, but they didn't give me a link or anything, so I will use my own affiliate links down below for both mics, and even the little lav that could. I just have to boost that one in post. It's a little bassy, but I equalize things. You know what I mean? You don't. Read a book, asshole. So what do you think sounded best? Post your thoughts down below, and I will delete your comment if it's any mic but these that I don't have an affiliate link for. If you advertise another mic, I will slap hand down you the back hand of life and we're done thank you for watching the video oh uh, i need to get more shirts you could get a canon cripple hammer shirt subscribe for more videos and i'll see you later just let me sell it